Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. allow me a moment to catch up with my breath. My shortage ako sa tulog, but mga 17 hours. Mahirap na itong matanda na. Distinguished members of the press, friends, ladies, and gentlemen, the Philippines concludes today its chair chairing of the 31st ASEAN Summit and related summits. Our chairmanship of ASEAN this year is doubly significant coming at a time when we mark an important milestone in ASEAN's history. We're honored that our leaders joined us in celebrating ASEAN's achievement and contribution of the contribution of special peace, stability, and prosperity for the next 50 years. We are guided by our chairmanship theme of partnering for change in engaging the world toward the realization of an integrated, peaceful, stable, and resilient Asian community that actively takes a leading role as a regional and global player in advancing political security, cooperation, economic growth, and social cultural development. I had an engaging, productive, and fruitful discussions with other leaders of ASEAN, ASEAN's continuing work in community building and the implementation of the blueprints for the work plans of the three community pillars, the political security community, the economic community, and the socio-cultural community toward the realization of ASEAN Vision 2025. Following that, ASEAN has held successive summits with its dialogue partners as well as the ASEAN-led mechanisms, the ASEAN Plus 3 and the East Asia Summit. At these meetings, we exchange views on regional and international issues of common interest, concern, and noted the importance of cooperation in addressing the issues that affect the peace, security, and prosperity of the region. We noted the importance of staying on in the course of economic integration, both at the level of ASEAN economic community and integration with our external economic partners. Related to this, I chaired and hosted the first meeting of the leaders of the regional comprehensive economic partners, and we expressed our resolve to realize a substantial conclusion of negotiations on this economic instrument. We had separate interfaces with two business councils, the ASEAN Business Advisory Council and the East Asia Business Council. We looked at the progress of our cooperation with external partners and the future direction of ASEAN's engagement with them, noting the importance of ASEAN centrality and the reality that relations bear fruit if cooperation is anchored on mutual respect and benefit. As we adopted and noted a number of declaration statements meant to enhance cooperation in various areas, I am pleased to inform you as well of the landmark outcomes of the 31st ASEAN Summit and related summits. Yesterday, during the ASEAN China Summit, we announced the start of a formal negotiation of the Code of Conduct of parties in the South China Sea. Just a few moments ago, the Central ASEAN leaders joined me in signing the ASEAN Consensus on the Protection and Promotion of Rights of Migrant Workers, our commitment to our people. As the 31st ASEAN Summit and related summits draw to a close, we have symbolically handed to the Republic of Singapore the chairmanship of ASEAN. 
Before I close, I wish to express my appreciation to the members of the media for your coverage throughout the year of the Philippines Chairmanship of ASEAN. You have been invaluable partners in raising ASEAN awareness to our people, particularly our hard work toward improving the lives of our people and in strengthening our ASEAN community. I thank you for getting that message across to the public. That concludes my statement, and let us all go home. <laughs> I am now ready for the questions. First question is from Raymond Tinaza of Bombay. I will only respond to the right questions. The wrong questions, uh, you can just float it. Uh, I will not waste my time uh, explaining something which is uh, ridiculous. I, I know, but it's just uh, it's the way it is, actually. I have been in this business for the last 40 years. I am ready. Are you? Yes, sir. Well, takot. Uh, well, yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir, Mr. President. First, uh, congratulations for successfully hosting and chair chairing the ASEAN and also the Filipino people. Uh, the first question would be on a domestic concern. Sir, what could be we can report to our countrymen the gains that we have as a republic? And what are the most important concerns that we have elevated throughout the ASEAN summits, especially to the dialogue partners? Half of the time, during the interventions actually was the issue of terrorism. Everybody scared with the new war of dying just suddenly in the explosion of any whatever. Uh, we fought to work closely. We discussed it in uh, the confidential meetings. We have agreed on so many things to enhance the defense of uh, our country. But unfortunately, uh, these are the things which I cannot really mm -hmm. talk about in public. I said most of the time. And uh, of course, I'd like to ask you to join me. All, all leaders of our uh, state there uh, mentioned about the heroism of our soldiers and policemen. <laughs> and of course, they mentioned about my, my loss. Uh, it figures of about 150 something of the soldiers and policemen. Uh, throughout uh, the country today, I'm losing about three policemen in ambushcades and number of soldiers also. Uh, we are through with this. I'm sure we have been stretched thin uh, by the events. And I just, uh, because uh, no more uh, activities, uh, we have to uh, zero in on the problems that are really urgent and immediate. And these are one of the things that I'd like to close in. Uh, insurgency and uh, the atrocities committed against peoples and communities. I'm ready for the next question. Sir, last question from my end. Uh, sir, uh, you've mentioned that uh, or even Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Shin Lung mentioned of the, the agreement of the uh, leaders to the finalizing of the code of conduct in the South China Sea. So can you share or elaborate, elaborate, sir, on how yes. did you come about with this agreement? Our representative of this country and the other at the ministerial uh, level, they're still at it. I don't know where, but uh, they're working on it. And China has graciously agreed mm -hmm. to a code of conduct, and uh, it binds itself to the agreement. And uh, the overflight in space uh, above and the use of the China Sea will uh, proceed, and it was a promise of uh, China, unbridled, unfettered. And we can use uh, 
this space, I said. The most telling argument there is, uh, I, I will not mention the name, but uh, one of the officials of China asked me, you are the president of your country, right? I go, yes, correct. And uh, of course, uh, I was just asking, I don't, uh, he was a lawyer maybe, and said, and do you are very much interested in the protection of the lives of your people? Yes. I said, China. We do not want to lose a single life just because we are quarreling over a vast uh, expanse of water. Uh, this is something which uh, 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 an age old problem. And I said, let it be. We'll just uh, observe certain norms of conduct, and uh, we were pressing China to set a date. And China said, do not just hurry up, but we will consider really fast-tracking this code of conduct. And uh, maybe the reason, why only now? Well, it's only now that we have talked as claimants. Taiwan is claiming a part of our seas and a part of the, that, that uh, sea is also being claimed by China. We have our own case uh, arbitral agreement, but that agreement binds only China and us. It does not bind us to the overlapping territories also in the south, which is also being claimed by Malaysia and Indonesia. And so if you stake a claim and you talk to China alone, by the time you have resolved the dispute, there's other claimants, and you, I said, you cannot bind them because they were not parties of interest. And that is why we had to wait for that occasion where everybody should be present and agree on some code of behavior, and that is conduct, was otherwise known. Ganun eh. Hindi natin matapos masabihin mo, puntahan mo yung China, give them a copy of the arbitral ruling. It does not end there. If you start to claim upwards, there's a, Taiwan also claiming a part of what is being claimed by China itself. And this Vietnam having a problem also with China and a certain, those are certain islands there. So the only way is really to talk, dialogue, ask for a peaceful resolution, and how can we go about using it's a West, West Philippine Sea or China? Does not really matter at this stage. But I have told them, and at every time that we talk about uh, claims and ownership, I've always. Uh, and in the presence of our military generals, I, I told China that I would have to confront uh, China on the arbitral ruling once, maybe, in, the, in during my term. But as of now, we are not ready to fight. As a matter of fact, President Trump toured the whole region, talked to China, they are now friends, and that is what uh, China also responded to, to the questions of uh, President Trump. President Trump, I said, I agree with you. We cannot fight, start a war. And with the, the North Korea crisis looming ahead, there are dark clouds there. We better pray. Yeah, in a nuclear holocaust. The only refuse, I think, for our people will be to pray for if those bombs explode everywhere and anywhere, this uh, region will suddenly become arid and we cannot plant on anything and to consider the destruction that a war would cost us and to think that we are not even interested in that issue. 
but for the reason that uh, Kim Jong-un is uh, toying with his uh, nuclear bombs. That's uh, 200, 300 more, more powerful than what was dropped over Japan during the last World War. And if all of those missiles and uh, the ICBMs would explode, that would mean the end of humanity. I guess that is just really the theory of God, because there will be some cleansing, and he will create another planet out of the ruins and over the lives of the whole mankind. That is the problem there. So we have to proceed with caution. And uh, I heard somewhere that uh, Korea has uh, committed not to draw the first blood. But whoever pulls the trigger first, the first one would blink. If that doesn't really matter. The fact is we cannot afford a war. Not, nobody has that luxury at all. For Korea, the rest of the Western world, for us, would want to maintain our neutrality. And uh, I said it would simply cause uh, the destruction. It would be the end of uh, everything. That is what we are worried about. It's not a question of con controlling uh, the effects, because if the consequences are there displayed before you, it's going to be something like a holocaust, maybe 1,000 times over. Walang mananalo dito. Mankind would lose, would end up the loser of this. Is. That is why I said uh, almost a fourth of our time together, and even during the public interventions, uh, I don't know if it was live uh, outside, about every leader uh, mentioned about uh, Korea. And uh, dito naman sa akin, they had really kind and good words for our armed forces and the police. And that is why I, I maybe I got it right. That right beginning of my term, I said, I'll double your salary. One is that really, uh, I, I'll tell you the truth, PNP, National Police. There are a lot of scholar works there. They've been used to, uh, maybe I would, uh, not, not the last card, but I would just deal with them like this. Dublado na sweldo mo. Sana wag naman akong makarinig na kunikolektahan mo, kinikilkilan mo. That's a Visayan term. Kilkil is extortion. Sana naman ho. Otherwise, uh, forget that you are my policeman. We have some scalawags in there, but fewer in between sa ating buhay sa... So always the... I'm having a, a lot of... Maybe we'll have to revise everything. I said I need time after busy days to ponder on it, sleep on it, and maybe come up with something. There's a serious problem about the recruitment. Kasi yung iba, baski wala, they can produce a diploma, then they can produce something of uh, a clean record. Pagkaganon, then I will hold the agency responsible for the clearance. If it's the NBI, then uh, I'm sure I far, uh, he will be fired and will be prosecuted. No, I have zero tolerance about craft and corruption. Wala akong pinipili. I have fired several already. But I do not make a noise about it. Basta dismiss ako ng dismiss. But also, at uh, the same time, if it's really a serious matter, I always order 
the filing of the case before the ombudsman. Sana wag mo yan. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko mag, may maghinakit sa akin. Pero somehow I have to do something. I have four years and some months left. Maybe just give me in the third year, I'd be able to change something there. Not only with the police, but with everybody. But you can only get it if you are not a... Kasi kung patawarin mo patawarin, tapos luko-luko talaga, the idiot would drag the entire PNP down to the drain. And it's not fair because most of our law enforcers, the police, and even the, the National Bureau of Investigations, there are still a few good men left there. But I have to study it very carefully, but also to come up with some uh, major decisions, maybe in the recruitment. No, no, no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Next question from Ina Andolong of CNN Philippines. Good evening, Mr. President. Yes, um, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau mentioned that you were receptive when he raised the issue of human rights and extrajudicial killings during your uh, brief uh, meeting. Can you tell us how you responded when well, this matter was raised and if other state leaders also, sir, uh, talk to you about this issue? You know, I was elected by the people of the Republic of the Philippines. I only answer to the people of the Republic of the Philippines. Ano to? If you are a Filipino, even if you are a fisherman and you ask me, I'll explain to you patiently. But for the others, they should come here. And I, I, I just said a word. What happened to the right to be heard? Did it not occur to you one to wonder why? Ang pinapakita nila extrajudicial killing. Hindi naman naman makaproduce where, what happened, when, and how. Uh, I was told by the PNP head, it was uh, at the, the venue, and I reported uh, one lady uh, who worked for a bank who was knocking the door of uh, her house when she arrived late. But there was, uh, nakatira lang ito, nanay pati tatay niya. Hindi ka agad narinig. So mayroon mga tao doon nag-inuman. Sa isang kanto, they, they just dragged the, the lady and raped her and killed her. And uh, but though, as he is popularly known, said, what are we going to do it? it find out if it's the drug. Then if it is drug, go to the human rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe to the priests and bishops. Don't mess up with the... Uh, I ordered you to stay away from drug cases because you are suspected of killing them extrajudicially. But would you not be surprised Na kung ipakita mo extrajudicial killings, lahat ang namatay sa extrajudicial killing lang. And when they are shown the records of about one is 10,000, the other is six, then four, whatever, dagdagan mo na, gawin mo na ng 50. And you think that they can really produce one conviction? Mula, how, kasi maglapit yung mga galing EU no, sa labas. So, uh, it's a, a social problem. As a matter of fact, it is a health issue. Fine. Then I, I, I'm, I'm now facing a guy who understands the problem. But pupunta sila dito yung figure sa extrajudicial killing. How about the other side? When did the Philippines become a narco politics. 
who was running the industry. How many <laughs> mayors and policemen and all, even generals, who were into it. Then, bakit namatay ito? I said, you know, but uh, it, it appears that uh, uh, you are killing the small fry. Well, okay, I'll go for the big ones. Now, why is it that it is uh, rampant in uh, communities blighted? Because Shabu is sold to the poor. They are not sold to the guys who are uh, students of uh, maybe rich enough to go around every night. Because they buy cocaine and hashes. Alam nila na maluluko sila. That's why sabihin mo, when you say that, uh, well, uh, why is it that he's an addict for years, but he's, uh, he, sometimes he's good. Eh? Well, you, you should take a look, I said, about the report of the World Health Organization. Now, you would see there uh, the characterization of Shabu LSD, and it is only in the methamphetamine that you will read there. Can I, who's my, where's my aid? Yung sa United Nations? It is a document of the United Nations. And Calamard came, she came here bringing, tagging along that uh, doctor, a black uh, guy. And he had the goal to say in public that, you know, drugs do not harm the human beings. I was, I was really appalled by this is international. It's the second time of unity. International Narcotics Control Board. Precursors. United Nations. And there is a characterization of it, uh, the effects of uh, everything. I told my staff to make this uh, public. Not, not because I want to defend myself. I told you, and it will be the rule until the end of my term, to the last day. If you destroy my country, I will kill you. No doubt about it. If you destroy the young, the youth are only assets, because generally we are really very poor. Most of 98% cannot afford to buy a coffin or even to go to the hospitals. And I'll just give you this uh, precursor to you. There's, there's a, I don't know where it is, but there's a, and it is only in methamphetamine that you will see that the effects are bizarre, violent, or not. So before I left for uh, there was this, uh, uh, this is the one. Where's my egg? Bong. Nagpag, nagpagbuhat na na. Bigyan mo sila. There was this bizarre guy who decapitated his wife. And he went out to his house shouting, Do not worry, I have killed Duterte. Look at the description. of All others seems to be okay. Except that there's just uh, an impact on the body. But uh, it's not so frightening. But Shabu, because. Pagita ara tong mga pictures. You gave me one that was already opened. Ah, here. My aid is uh, from the army. And uh, she's the one bringing this uh, all the time. Cannabis. Well, uh, cannabis is 
in the effect that cannabis smoke contains 50% more tar than the high tar cigarettes, which puts users at an increased risk of lung cancer and other respiratory diseases. Good for you. You want that, then you smoke uh, cannabis. So with the... Cocaine, you can find it uh, other risks. Uh, you better read the, the, uh, the characterization. Other risks, mixing cocaine with alcohol is dangerous, cocktail, and can greatly increase the chances of sudden death. Well, if you are the one dying suddenly, good for you and good for mankind. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. Tablets or pills that are sold as ecstasy may contain other potentially dangerous substances which can vary widely in strength and effects. Do you remember now the case of uh, those four guys who were had, uh, who had a drinking spree inside Pasay City Entertainment? Four of them suffered heart attacks. And the police told me that during the forensics, ang, ang heart niya tripled bumuka. Uh, yeah, those are, as I said, these characteristics. Heroin. All the risks. Users risk overdosing on heroin, which can lead to coma and death through respiratory. This is very popular among uh, Hollywood stars. They, but even, even here in the Philippines, you cannot be a legit member of the industry if you are not into drugs. I'm sorry to say this. But not all, but most of them. You know, kapayat na, hindi mo maintindihan ang, I'm sure that it's the one. LSD, the physical effects are small compared to the psychological, emotional effects. So it's more of the mind. But uh, look at methamphetamine. Other risks. Methamphetamine you sometimes triggers aggressive, violent, and bizarre behavior among users. Kaya pati yung mga bata, they rape infants, they rape a family, rapes the blind mother, rapes the daughter-in-law, molested the 14-year-old daughter, and stabbed to death. A one-year-old guy. If you are the president, would you, would you be comfortable with this? And you're confronted every day. Now, I do not know if uh, my orders to the police and other law enforcement agencies uh, to stop uh, meddling in Shabu drugs so, uh, do not, because uh, if they are, if, if, if they are, if they lie dead there. Shot, it's always the police who gets the blame. Kuhayaan mo. Now, there was this report that uh, the parents wanted to see me because uh, yung, uh, yung, the daughter who works for a bank came late uh, one night and uh, maybe it's raining. The, 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 the old couple could not hear the sound. That's uh, one of the sad stories. And that, what? puts me to a rage. Because those are the people who cannot even defend when you rape a baby. What am I supposed to do? Judges? There are a lot of judges on the tape. Fiscals? There's one idiot there who's been prosecuting cases, 1,000. And no conviction. And it's also for the judge. Uh, I, I can review it, but uh, I, I'm warning everybody. I cannot tolerate this kind of idiotic uh, word. Either you stop, go away, tie yourself with rope around your neck, do not hang yourself, but make sure that you are tied to something solid. Because if I see you doing these things, then Maybe, just maybe, 
the criticisms will turn out to be correct. So yes. Going back to my question, so itama po ba, you responded to Prime Minister Trudeau's um, concerns yeah. oh. over killings said, by explaining uh, to him the news I will, report? I said I will not explain. It is a personal and official insult. That is why you hear me throwing down epithets, curses, nagmumura, bullshit and everything. Because it angers me when you are a foreigner, you do not know exactly what is happening in this country. You do not even investigate. You only show before the United Nations a record of how many persons died you claim to be extrajudicial. Extrajudicially. I said, I do not. I said, well, you can investigate. Find out. Look, guys, what I am really asking, uh, and before, uh, a lot, they were all there. I said, why don't you investigate first and find out the truth? Whatever happened, why are you not giving us in government the simple rule of the right to be heard? Well, somebody here picks up the records of dead persons and they go there. You know, my advice to everybody, the ones that I curse publicly, is do not get your documents from the opposition and from the communists. Because I said they are all falsified. Maybe I would say as a reality that there are some killing extrajudicially. But as always, I order their arrest and detention, just like what happened in the Kalookan case. But you will be hearing more of it. Keep track of that record because uh, in the end, you would know the real truth. The truth is the truth of the accused policemen and the truth of uh, uh, media and everywhere. There are two. When it is a case, do not conclude that this one is correct. Give him the benefit of doubt and the right to be heard. Then at the end of the day, you'll have to make a choice. Okay. Next question from Alexis. No, uh, give, uh, I have signed here for ages. Sorry. No, it's okay, sir. But huli na lang po ito, sir. Can Mahal ang tao ba nito? <laughs> sir, can you tell, this is about your uh, meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump. You mentioned just now um, you used to curse um, leaders or countries, among them the U.S. in the past. Now, after your bilateral meeting with uh, Donald Trump, uh, your spokesman said that there will be a marked difference in the relationship of the Philippines and the U.S. How so? In, in, in so far as this issue is concerned, I said, I will answer the fisherman and the farmer, and I will explain to them patiently why it is so. But I will never, never allow a foreigner to question me. It's an insult, and that is why what you get is a bullshit for me. If you want, you just take a list. The, list, the prudent thing to do is ask for a list. And if your, uh, if your unit or whatever company is rich enough, then ask them to fund your investigation. Sir, I'm asking about the U.S.-Philippines relationship moving forward after your bilateral It has with... been uh, a forward uh, movement. My quarrel with uh, the U.S. is not the government and the people. That would be idiotic also. My quarrel as people there in government with different policies. You know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I gave them something. Along the way, it's about time that you really know. Read this. It's all there. Go to the people and... Anyway, maybe one of them will also be interested to go 
to the United States. What's out for these guys? Thank you, sir. Next question from Alexis Douglas Romero of the Philippine Star. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, considering your criticisms and issues against the European Union, did you take the opportunity to raise them with European Council President Donald Tusk on the sidelines of the ASEAN-EU summit? I think we were with the same group when I said, whatever happened to that uh, precious uh, phrase, it's a Western uh, thing, the right to be heard. So you relayed the same message to him as that of uh, Prime No, Minister. I was the one who injected the topic. He was not at all interested. It's, uh, there were a lot of uh, TV. The TV was working there. He did not. He did, uh, I made the uh, intervention, and in my, I inserted in the, the matter of extrajudicial killing. Mm, okay. And, and so whatever happened. You thought at the, uh, about the mot democracy. Now you, uh, you, your, heart, uh, your heart bleeds for the criminals. And I said, I've been wrong telling you. I've been mayor for, I'm now will be uh, something like 40 years in government. I know because I, I, I saw several times that they really fight it out. Good for America because uh, it's still the poppy derivatives, uh, marijuana, and, but I said, remember, I said, do you remember it? I just uttered it four months ago. And I said, it is a crisis of the proportions you'd never know. Once Shabu enters into the mainstream market, you will have, you will discover to your sorrow that you have a very, very serious problem. And we did so with 100,000 distribute shabu among the, and you'll get, uh, you'll be horrified. Because it sinks. The, and I, 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 I remember, and I'm sure you remember that also that you saw that footage where uh, a doctor in the company of, what's her name, Calamard. So why would I, and I would tell her, look, shit, there is a report coming from the same body where you are. You are a rapporteur. You bring a doctor here and, you know, start to expound about drugs. And the head, I said, goal. you remember all, you only have one, program to watch. He said that drugs uh, does not do harm to people, to human beings. I almost fell out of the chair that I was sitting. Okay. God, here is a United Nations inhabited working for allegedly for mankind and you have here a list of drugs which will explain why they are criminals. And you listen to these idiots there, believing them. And you investigate me? Son of... Well, let me tell you, are you crazy? You better reconcile your uh, basic uh, principles there. If you cannot agree on something and you start to mess up, then what you get is, that's why I said to Obama, go to hell. You want to file a case? File it. Whatever court, United Nations, go. And uh, the EU offering us, uh, I don't know what, how much this time. So uh, the Secretary of Finance uh, asked me if I'm willing to accept it. Give it to the persons you believe who will tell you the truth. Do not give it to me. Because you, you, you think that I'm a, just like the NPAs. Look at the propaganda outside. The 30 U.S. fascist dictators 
And then I said suddenly last week, if I am a dictator, I am a son of a bitch, why are you forcing me to talk to you? Look at the propaganda. Resume peace talks, resume peace talks. Oh, if you think that I'm a fascist and a killer, why are you talking to me? Now, for the others, let us be an education, education also for all. Do not come to me asking, even if it is true or false, do not ask me. If you want something from my mouth, evidence, do not get it from my oral cavity. Look for somebody else. You must be stupid. Even if it's true or it's false. That is right against self-incrimination. You must be thinking that I am stupid. Remember that I was a prosecutor, prosecutor for nine years before I became mayor and eventually I don't know why I'm here. Okay. Uh, follow up, Mr. President. Uh, did European Council President Donald Tusk uh, talk to you about the donations of the EU? Did you discuss it with him? Forget it. We will survive even if we have to eat uh, dried fish and rice. Okay. We will survive. Thank you, Mr. President. Next question is Just from don't uh, fuck with my country about sovereignty. That is really an insult. I consider it a very serious insult. Yes, sir. Wang Zheng Zheng of CCTV. Evening, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I would like to know because this uh, uh, Asian China summit, our uh, Prime Minister Li Keqiang gave a five point proposal to commit to work with ASEAN to build a common idea, common prosperity, and a common respons uh, responsibility uh, to a shared future. So I would like to know how's your comments about this and uh, what do you see the Chinese new leadership's diplomacy. Thank you. Uh, you know, if you have read book uh, 100 Years Marathon, you'll get the, the so many uh, answers to your question. But it is something which is really a matter of geopolitics. You know, geography is always changing. Like Africa, it used to be what? Uh, a, 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 an assembled of tribes, Arabs there. But when the West came in, made use of their natural resources, so, and uh, decided to cut the whole continent into pieces. One, uh, the Westerners. Germany had it. Britain uh, was also there to get the share. And uh, they created an empire, the Western world, an industrial empire, using the resources of other people. And in the process, putting down revolutions because the people there decided that somebody else is messing up with the resources of my country. And they were the first Westerners who went there, made use of the oil in numbers, and built their industrialization ahead. So leaving behind, that's history. Changing the uh, geopolitical, it is always something like might is right, and right is might. Same thing in Asia. It will change. We, the Philippines, were occupied by the Spaniards for 400 years. America, 50 years. Malaysia was uh, 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 a gift uh, for the British and Indonesia uh, under the Dutch. So now it is uh, two generations, three generations later. There's a shifting of geopolitical uh, powers. There's a, 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 and now there are territories that uh, 
And these terrorists are now concentrating in building up uh, a caliphate and uh, they, they, they want uh, other uh, to establish their claim just like what they were doing in Marawi. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm not about ready to donate even an inch of my country. Mga Filipino, they have no land. They raided uh, the National Housing Authority building houses for the soldiers. And they went there to occupy the left and claim the property as theirs. And I told the soldiers, Leo, I'll just build you a new one, much bigger. The concession was or the come on was, just leave them. Give it, it it's your Filipino brother. They, they simply are also poor. Because if they are rich, then they would not be messing up with the government. So, Kadamai and the rest got the properties, and I said, go away. We, let, let's go back to the camp and let's have uh, save, let, we'll save enough for. Uh, that was my dream, but the Marawi surge, siege uh, happened. And so even if I have the property, I could not build the houses for the soldiers. It's just a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice for your country. I, I said, I look for the money somewhere. But uh, to be accepting dollars uh, from a country who, who thinks that you're a killer, <laughs> why come to us and offer something? Keep your money. Do not meddle up with my, the sovereignty of my country. Do not impose conditions. I am not about to. We are not. We are not rich. We are poor, a third world country. But you do not bargain the dignity by accepting their money, and they would make conditionalities that are not really acceptable to us, because uh, it rims on the edge of violation of our sovereignty. As president, I have to protect the sovereignty of the Republic of the Philippines. I have to maintain that uh, even at the expense of being pictured as a birdogo, an executioner. Fine. What about it? Anyway, my, my, my duty is to my country. I only answer to the Philippines. I will not answer to any other bullshit, especially foreigners. Layoff. Nobody ever mentioned about human rights violation. No one was ready to accept, either private or public. Uh, we were to, uh, the Canadians were talking about aid. Assistance, and you know, I said, uh, you know how Canada is. It's a democracy. Uh, fine, it's a working democracy. Uh, I do not, do not force uh, anybody there to give that uh, clearance or whatever. Just like what happened months before, we bought twenty. We 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 were trying to buy. 23,000 rifles because I already had uh, some intelligence report that uh, the country is a fire. And the intelligence showed that uh, there was this build up in Marawi, which could be precipitated any moment because it was fine. But mind you, I am a descendant from that Marawi. My grandmother, the mother of my mother. And you would see how painful it was to give the order for the soldiers to go in. And what took the military so long? Not their fault. It was my order not to touch the mosque and the holy shrine because it will inflame the Muslims everywhere. And they were asking for clearance to bomb. Certainly not. I will not allow you. 
and into the fourth month, they decided to confront me. Uh, we cannot go there without, because uh, our losses, uh, the lives, uh, were breaching the 100 mark. Uh, I think I lost something like 167. But you know, in Mindanao, I've been telling you that Shabu was fueling terrorism. And because that was really an issue, nobody would believe me. And I, but I would have sworn in because I had uh, some relatives telling me that there is something there which is about to explode. And I, if you remember, I was warning every day, everybody, do not force my hand into it. I was actually directing my statement to the terrorists. Because if you do, I will not hesitate to declare martial law. So when they started the siege, I said, and you ask me, all of you media, when will this end? I cannot really destroy the place because there it's our, the interest of our country. There are two million Filipinos, laborers and domestic helpers working there. Then if you do not use your coconut, that is something that will be out of control by that time. And so I had to explain, was I was holding the military. They were in near desperation because the losses were... I had to call everybody, some kings, and I said, uh, you know, I cannot hold the military longer for, for, for six months. Maybe they will shoot me. And I said, I have to, finally, I said, well, I gave to Secretary Lunasana, just confer with your generals, and you decide how to win the war. And so it did. But I told the Marawi guys, I will rebuild Marawi. And I'm looking for money. So I, you, you, you'd have noticed the tax collection is good under Dulay. We have been able to force uh, taxpayers, airlines who never paid anything. And during my term, I said, you have to pay or I will sell your planes. Make your choice. And the elite of this country who are holding government lands, making business out of it without even turning a single centavo to government who rightfully owns the property. And at the end, I said, look, but maybe I'm toying the idea. I will, I, will, I will sue you for plunder. Plunder is non billable So you guys, you return the money now. Because if I file a case against you, when the case is filed in court, you cannot bail yourself out because it is non billable All of you, I said, and I'm, I was addressing to the elite of this, 400 of society, they say. Do not find repudes in my... You can kill me, you can impeach me, try your luck there, but there will be no compromises. I do not agree on, on these things. I do not compromise the interest of my country and people. You can be sure of that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of uh, the media. That concludes our press conference, and the president will still proceed to his last bilateral with I New still Zealand. have one last bilateral. You know, everybody participating there wants bilateral. We have this plenary, then bilateral. I could not even keep up with the heavy schedule. I have to wake up at 6. So I, I, I go home, I, I, I ask so many questions from uh, the workers of government. And I get the feedback. When I'm satisfied that everything, the, the police is there, 
But, you know, uh, I said, uh, we sleep two, three, and I wake up at uh, six, seven, because of the so many bilaterals. And I said, I have a shortage of uh, sleep. Maybe I'm for 16 hours, 17 hours, something like that. But I will recover, because tomorrow would be the last day, and I'm flying out. To my city by the sea. <laughs> uh, I feel uh, it is my comfort zone. I, I see my grandsons and I embrace my youngest daughter and everything seems to be, to be good. But when I land here, back, I, it seems to be that uh, something is wrong with this uh, society. Had I known that this is the kind of thing that you have to indulge in, maybe if I, if I control the hands of time, it would have a different uh, decision. But, you know, it was a question of law. It was not because there was already money available at that point, nobody was giving me, and I was not receiving anything. I said, you know, you, 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 you must know now how it developed. But uh, I do not want to offend uh, Grace Pope. But it was the reason why I decided that if that is the way how the Supreme Court rules on some important constitu constitutional issues. It was in the interpretation that natural born citizens means simply you are a citizen, a Filipino, at the time of your birth. When you go out of the womb of your mother, you must already be a Filipino. Naturalization grant of whatever is not naturally born Filipino. When the Supreme Court applied it, but I will honor it. There's no problem. It is, the, it is a decision of the court. But at that time, if I go back in time, that precipitated a very serious uh, issue in my mind. Always, if you become a citizen by a treaty, that there will be no stateless persons. I like it. No problem about it. But there's a treaty which says that you cannot be a foundling or a person without a citizenship. And I, I agree, and I agree with it. But, you know, it's an interpretation that if you are naturalized, adoption, you are not a Filipino citizen because it is when you get out of the physical side. But when she was declared, uh, she was disqualified by the commission on elections, also justices. And uh, upon appeal, uh, they ruled that uh, she is a Filipino. And I said, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Supreme Court, I do not agree with you. So I'm running. So I flew in. There was this birthday party of a fraternity, Brad Wine. I attended the the party, and I announce my intention. And that is where I find myself now. And I've said that, do not destroy my country. Do not destroy the young in this country. We are not rich. I belong to the 98, maybe a few, four or five million. I, will, I said, uh, if it, uh, it begins to be something like one billion, you can be sure, by the grace of God, I will step down. I, uh, there's a waiver. There's no need for me to renew it. It does not say that this waiver expires on such and such a date. I just gave the authority for some guys to look into my bank account. And I told you that the money was this much. Now you want me to arrange. They must have been taking me as Otto Otto. 
No? This guy, the, no, the, oh, you do this, you do that. You, you're a uh, underrun boy. But you know, there are things which I cannot uh, ask uh, an errand to do something, uh, and they're waiting for me. Uh, the last bilateral would be uh, New Zealand. She's waiting. Hasinta Arden. This is a prime. This is a lady. She's the prime minister of uh, New Zealand. They're waiting for me because they also want a bilateral. So it's 10:30. Hopefully by two o'clock. Uh, but if this continues, I might as well decide to jump into the Pasig River and rest in peace for all time.